Hey, it's Les from the TV Dudes. This week, I was lucky enough to chat with actress Daya Vaidya. You can currently see Daya playing political shark Jen Kowski on Amazon's drama series Bosch. But you may know her from the CBS show Unforgettable, where she played Nina Inara. And we talk about all of that, her history with dance, how she produces films with her husband, and how their family's making it through quarantine and stay insane. It's a great interview, and I hope you enjoy. Hi, Daya. Hi, how are you doing? I'm doing great. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for making time today. I really appreciate it. No problem. So uh, when I was reading up and doing my research, um, I saw that you got into dance at a really early age, like like three years old, uh, which I, <laughs> I I was interested to ask what what it really meant for you or, or what uh, what about that body connection and fun and, and dancing do you remember that feeling that first kind of grabbed you about that? Is that something that you're able to get back to now as an adult when you dance or when you move around? I love that you're asking about dance. That's so interesting. I didn't expect that. And that's, it's so funny because that's kind of the base of everything I do. I feel like, um, so yeah, it's crazy that you're asking about dance. Um, dancing started so young for me and it's pretty much segued into acting, but everything I still do on the set or rehearsing or anything um, comes from my dance training. So I feel like that has had a huge impact on me. Um, I started so young and I didn't become a, I was a professional dancer for a small time, but I, you know, I was pulled to acting. And so it was always, a, I was always torn between the two things. And mm -hmm. so it's been really good for me to use the dance in my acting. Cause I love it. I, I, I will always love it. And so, yeah, I'm like a huge dance fan too. I'm, I'm now a fan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that would be a big yes. Yes. <laughs> how did that transition happen? Um, was it how you segued from dancing into acting? Uh, do they feel similar to you as, in terms of both being on a stage and in a performance or, or are they very, very different? Well, you know, one of my, one of the things I always say, and then uh, one of my mentor and acting teachers for the last, 20 years, um, Stuart Rogers always says, no art is different. Art is the same. Hmm. So for me, it's basically comes from the same place. It's expression. So I feel like letting go and not being in your head and kind of just getting into whatever character is the same as in dance, you know, whatever music it is, whatever you're moved by. And my other little saying is it's all in which means no matter what's going on with you in your body or if you're um, even when you're playing a character, whatever's going on with you as a person, it's in the movement, it's in the art, it's in that piece. So I kind of, you put it in. That's my, that's my um, experience with that. Yeah. So they're definitely related. I feel like people maybe first got to know you uh, play Nina uh, over on unforgettable um, in terms of differences in characters. Uh, what would you say the the difference for you as an actress or what was most interesting when you got into the complexities of your characters between Nina and getting to play Jen now on Bosch? Um, you know, what's cool is there, there's actually more similarities between those two characters than differences. I feel like I'm drawn to a certain kind of character. Um, one of the things about unforgettable when we first started on that um, was it was important for me to play a woman that was really strong and was really, really smart. I don't know. I had this sometimes when you're playing, it's gotten so much better, but you know, sometimes when you're playing ethnic characters back in the day, it used to be a little bit more marginalized. And it was important to me whenever I played these characters, especially if they were more urban, more street, that they had an intelligence to them and that they were written that way. So that's kind of something I always go into it discussing with the producers and the writers. And I'm, it's important to me. Um, so I feel like that's some commonality between Jen and Nina. They both come from kind of their scrappy characters. They come from sort of a street background, but they are so smart. And um, that's what I like to play with. Um, it's not only what I play, but those two particular characters, I, I love that aspect of them. So the only thing I would say is different in terms of them is that um, Jen, Jen is a political animal. Like she is, 
and and I love how Bosch writers go far with that. They, you know, uh, just how she how ambitious she is. So you know, we were with Hector Ramos at first, and then it was like, okay, now Irving wants to run for mayor. So okay, she's all in with Irving now. <laughs> so that's that's um, that's Jen, and I like I like women like that. I know you uh, are a supporter of of orgs that champion diversity in Hollywood. Um, but I know often as an, as an actress, it's not like you said, you know, you're not always the writer of these things. Um, and so sometimes mm-hmm. you're not really in control necessarily of, of what's handed to you. How do you go about trying to exercise some power on, uh, on the roles that you want to see conveyed on television or, or the roles that you want to see put out into public? Um, that's a good question. I think each project, you kind of have to approach it differently depending on the team and who's behind it. And it's like any job, you sort of read the environment and some directors, writers, producers are more open than other director, writer, producers. Um, Bosch happens to be a really amazing team in this way. They just, they ask your opinion. They, they want your input. So you feel really comfortable on the set. To kind of speak up if something feels weird, you can always call them, talk to them. It's just a very open environment. If you don't have an environment like that, I I sometimes will go through my reps. I find a way, though. I think it's really important. So I try to find a way without micromanaging, you know, just to get to get my voice out there and still allow them to sort of do what they want to do. And then we, it's very collaborative. So try to work together. And and I think also sometimes a lot of them are appreciative of different voices because my experience, I grew up in Oakland. I grew up, you know, in in a, in a different probably experience than a lot of the writers, some of them. And so I, I can even say, Hey, you know, when I was growing up, this happened like this. And they, they're usually pretty good about being like, Oh, okay. I didn't know. You know, and and then you kind of talk about it and then it just can happen right then and there. They'll change the line. They'll, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty cool. Yeah, I, I think I read on on Unforgettable that you got to to bring a little bit of input to the uh, ethnicity of your character. That it, it was originally written kind of open. Uh, mm-hmm. Do you do you find more that you get to bring that kind of stuff to the table? I, I know you'd said earlier is getting better. Is that in is that one of the facets in which do you, do you feel like you can bring more to the people are more mm-hmm. open to your contributions? Yeah, I think in general, I think we've we've come a long way. You know, we really there's still more to go, but I feel like everyone with all the movements that have happened, whether it be with women, minorities, um, all you know, LGBTQ, everyone, we just have more of a place at the table now. I feel like I think our voice is being listened to, um, not for the first time, but for the first time, I feel like they're really listening. I don't know. It's just been nice. I I, I saw a shift happened in the past few years. I really have when I, even when you're just sitting there at a, at a table read, um, you know, they're, they're listening to your input more. And so I do feel like I've had a say in that. And I think multiculturalism has also been um, better in terms of, I come from a, you know, kind of a blended background. So I can kind of bring that because sometimes it's not just one or the other. It's not just one race, one thing. I can kind of bring a multidimensional, multicultural feel to it so which is a unique experience that i came up with so i like to i always like to kind of throw that on the throw that on the table too i uh i know that there are obviously times where you you do get to pick what story you want to tell and and produce or write or or director or whatever i i know you've worked with your husband on on blue on now on the locksmith um when it comes to producing something or uh going that extra step of, of, I don't just want to be in this or, or be near this project. I want to help this project actually get to screens. Uh, do you find yourself being drawn to certain themes or certain uh, projects or stories that, that really kind of light a spark for you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, my husband is really good this way. I mean, he's a, he's a writer, producer. He's kind of a, he's always creating content. And so he and I bounce ideas off of each other a lot. And the thing that's most important to us, I think together as a couple and as a production company is to do stories that make you think we just, I'm not the most, I'm not saying I love just kind of nice, like a rom-com or something just to make you laugh. Not saying I don't like that, but I would say what we're most interested in are stories that dig deeper and are, are a little bit more, um, 
I think are a little bit less conventional and more, uh, I think we want to push those boundaries in terms of really going to things that might be a little bit too edgy, sometimes might, you know, uh, even some people won't touch mm. or maybe main studios won't touch. Like he is big on bring it. We, we want to kind of do things that will push those boundaries a lot. So right now we have a couple of things in the works that we're hoping that we're, we're excited about, like, you know, making a splash <laughs> with our production company. Uh, I know one of the things that everybody's running into working from home is, uh, is finding that way to stop yourself and not accidentally keep returning to work, like kind of half working 24 hours a day. Uh, do you find being, uh, being kind of all at home that it's, uh, that it's difficult to not just, let's just start a project, Don, come on, let's just discuss the whole thing right now. I bet we could stay up for two days and do the script. Let's get the kids in on it. we got it. <laughs> Oh my God. Yeah. Um, we can fall into that trap for sure. And then never sleep. Um, <laughs> yeah, definitely. Well, cause we have this creative family. I call it a circus family. We have like, this, our, our kids are in it. He's in it. We're like, we sit the kids down. We do, you know, we, we try out scenes with them. And I mean, it's kind of crazy. Cause I don't think, I think in our family, everything's blended together. So we're sort of at dinner, we're discussing a story idea. And at the same time, the kids, helping them with something that they're doing. I mean, it's, it's all blended in. So I, I would say, uh, I, I, you know, I don't know how good we do about, <laughs> about separating the work and the family. It's just one. I think the kids, uh, you know, they know that too. And they're, they're part of it. Right. So if they're doing something, we're like, tell us a story, you know, tell us, how would you, we're, we're big on creativity. So yeah. I feel like if you're always, you know, you make it fun and, exciting you come up with you know new ideas and i guess that's where they come out of of real life so i will say this it's funny stuff happen with us if anything crazy happens with us and anytime it could be i could be in the kitchen making dinner and something happens i'm like oh my god that scene that would be such a good scene <laughs> put that in the scene hey write that down right now like i mean we literally will be like stop how did this how did that's or great. even a fight we could get into a fight and he'll do something i'll be like ah, remember this Remember this moment, you know, it's, yeah, it's great. I'm, I'm still mad, but I'm going to take a note right now. Hang on. Yeah, that's great. You had said something earlier about all art being the same art, all, all, all creativity is the same. Um, there's something I think really wonderful about normalizing that creative process so that uh, it's not, you know, mom or dad's work that they go off and do where you create television in a vacuum somewhere or create movies in a vacuum somewhere. Um including them on this and normalizing that. I, I feel like starting dancing young normalizes that connection mm -hmm. to your body and, and mm -hmm. you feeling part of you. I know that has to help with being stuck inside with this kind of isolation mm -hmm. and quarantine. Um, as a family, how are y'all staying sane and getting through it? Is there something that you're sticking to routine wise that you feel like is really helping? Yeah, you know, it, this just hit me last night, actually, because um, you know how you have those moments during this where you're doing okay, you think, and then it sets in, it mm. hits you. You're like, yeah. oh, my God, I'm never going to leave here. <laughs> yeah. I'm trapped. You just have that moment of like, the walls are closing in. I think we all have felt that um, with what's going on right now. You know, you just, it, and it freaks you out. You start getting nervous or any of that, and the kids start asking questions and and. um this sounds a little cliche, but I don't mean this in a cliche way. It's music has been, I mean, the serious medicine in our house. I, we have, uh, we have a few DJ, like online DJs we've been, we've been putting on. And if we just start dancing, that's again, dance. I always go back to dance. The second I'm feeling something, I have to put on music. I have to start dancing. Like I, I will even pull the kids out and start moving them. I'll start to like, let's just break this up. Let's go outside and dance. Let's, let's, let's move. Um, I feel like the second you do that, it takes you out of that, that walls closing in depression mode that can happen. Yeah. Um, and then it taps you in. The other thing is, it goes back to what I was saying before is the all in thing I was saying. If, if you're moving and you're constantly like being in touch with what's happening in your body, so you're not pushing it away, you're not trying to, you know, run away from it. Cause I don't try to feel okay. You know what I mean? Like, I don't try to go, I'm going to, I need to, 
I want to be okay. And you're good. And I don't even tell the kids you're fine. Be okay. Be, I, I don't do any of that. I just go, what, are, whatever you're feeling, just go all in with it, brace it, take it. And then you just express it. So if that, I don't know if that works for everybody because maybe not everybody's as, you know, right brain as me, but I'm that is what works for me. I just, whatever it is I'm feeling, I don't try to push it out. I just put it in. Yeah, no, I'm, no, it, it really does. It's, I'm the same way. I, I don't, I'm not going to sit here and be mad at myself for being slightly anxious during a pandemic. I mean, I've, I've had depression my yeah. whole life. I have definitely had moods that didn't tie to reality. Uh, th- this one's fairly exactly. appropriate. I just need to manage it. <laughs> and so, exactly. And say it's okay. And, you know, and also just kind of the more you sort of take it in and embrace it, it, it doesn't build the mm. same way. Yeah. It's that it's that froze up defensiveness that that yeah. that seems to make it worse for me. Yeah, exactly. Or repression. If yeah. you repress it, it it builds and grows too. You can't. If you got to find that spot, that spot where you're sort of like you're not indulging in it, to where you're just wallowing. You know, mm-hmm. it's that you can go too far that way. But um, you find that little middle part where you just feel good. You just let go. You know, it's 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 a, it's a tricky thing sometimes, nope. but I think it's important. Yeah. I mean, it's the thing to practice, right? We've all got time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a good practice for mental health, right? Thank you so much for making time to talk to me about it today. People can go uh, spend a little bit of this time watching uh, season six of Bosch right now. And uh, and y'all just, I believe, also got your season seven, which will be y'all's final. Uh, really fun show. Uh, thank you so much for making time today. Thank you. It was great. Thanks a lot. TV Dudes is an independently run podcast out of Austin, Texas. We are exclusively listener supported. If you'd like to help us out, go to patreon.com slash TV Dudes. You can also find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at TV Dudes. All the music for our show is done by our friend and original TV dude, Gregory J. Amani Smith. To find out more about us, go to the TV Dudes.com. I'm Randy Lander. I'm Les Weiler. And I'm Kyle Scott. Thanks for listening. <laughs>